great to be here this morning, and thank you, Senator Waters, for the introduction, and thanks to the entire bipartisan group of legislators who supported these bills. Uh, Mayor Weston, it is great to be here with you, and Superintendent Arbor, with you, uh, all of the school board members who are here, teachers and students who are here. We have the Navy Junior ROTC here at Color Guard, so thank you all as well uh, for being a part of today's uh, bill signing and festivities. Um, and congratulations to the Dover Middle School for its recognition. That's really terrific. Uh, and I think it speaks so well to all the work we're all doing together uh, to try to make sure that our students have access to a 21st century uh, career path. So uh, good work. Uh, we all know that the 21st century economy is demanding uh, a new skill set, a skill set that it demands really that our young people skills, especially in the area of STEM, but also that they're creative and collaborative. I spend a lot of time um, making sure as I go to visit businesses that I talk with workers about what it is they do on the manufacturing floor, for instance, and it's really clear that the kind of education that CTEs provide uh, really is going to be um, critical to making sure that we move forward uh, with a growing economy. Uh, we need to make sure that we are helping the existing businesses grow, that we are attracting new innovative businesses to our state, and that we are creating great jobs that support a growing middle class. CTEs are clearly critical to that mission, and um, we want to make sure that as we are looking at our future as a state and balancing priorities, that we're investing in these centers in our bipartisan budget. And that's what we did in the last budget because these centers provide hands-on experience and prepare students for really successful careers. Uh, the Dover Career Technical Center in particular is a prime example of that. Uh, we are actually in the Gourmet Table Restaurant, am I correct? Run by culinary students. Uh, and there are a number of restaurants like this around the state run by culinary students who are really learning all aspects of the food preparation and cooking business. Um, in addition, Dover CTC offers wide, a wide range of career programs, some of which I wasn't sure I had known were offered here, so it's always nice to come and refresh your knowledge. So in addition to technology courses for computer, biology, automo automotive, and electric um, trades, we also have courses in the building trades here, in engineering, in health and animal sciences, Firefighter Academy, and Business and Marketing. So what a great range of choices for our young people as they determine and learn what they're really interested in, what kind of career paths they want to have. This is exactly the kind of um, options for young people that we really need to be having. And it's something we've been focusing on not only at our CTEs, but also at our community college programs, helping young people identify maybe what kind of career they think they want, and then really understanding what kind of courses they need to take and what kind of skills they need to be competent in if they're going to follow those careers. So that's uh, one of the things that we're trying to get better and better at uh, throughout the state, and I hope that the students who are here in particular will give the adults some feedback about how we're doing, uh, because this is all about giving you the kind of choices that will help you build a great future. Senate Bill 335 and House Bill 1350 increase support for career and technology education centers, and they strengthen our efforts to prepare students for jobs in the 21st century economy. Senate Bill 335, as Senator Waters mentions, uh, establishes a commission to study, to study these centers and recommend what kind of funding we should have going forward for training and apprentice programs and for construction and renovation programs for these centers so that we can make these facilities as modern as possible. We obviously want to do it in a way that's really cost effective for our taxpayers. And that's where the idea of partnerships with businesses, advanced manufacturing, and other programs is so critical. We know that we have some good models of these partnerships around the state. Really, I think one of the things that this commission is going to enable us to do is look at what partnerships we have and figure out how we can those partnerships to all kinds of different situations throughout the state that make sense for the local community, the business interests, and the skills that we're trying to build. Um, and I'm also really pleased that House Bill 1350 redistributes and prioritizes capital budget funding for this facility. And it really shows
shows uh, how well our legislature can work uh, and when changing circumstances occurred last spring and they realized there was maybe more available money in that budget, uh, they worked really quickly to, to change the funding formula for this center and it's um, going to make a big difference, as the mayor said, to the taxpayers in Dover. So I'm really pleased to be able to do that. Um, finally, I guess uh, in particular I'd like the young people in the room to think about this, uh, but the adults too. When you think about our country and our state, it was founded by a group of people who risked everything for the idea that ordinary people could come together and make their own decisions and run their own state and their own country. And they really did risk everything, lives, businesses, treasure, whatever it was. Um, they risked everything because they believed that each generation would be committed to the idea that we would unleash the talent and energy of all of our young people. And as we did that, and as we brought them in and brought them to the decision-making table, we would get stronger and stronger, and our economy would thrive, and the quality of life would get better for everybody. That was a really revolutionary concept. And that's what investing in a career and techno technology center like this one really means for our future. And as you heard Senator Waters say, and Mayor Weston referenced it too, we do that. Each generation pays it forward for the next. That's always what marked our country and this state. And this is what this kind of investment is about. So I am just delighted to be here and so grateful that all of you gave up some of your morning to be here and mark a very important step forward that marks the kind of partnership and commitment to our future that defines us as a state. So let's get to it. I invite some students. Yes, let's get some we have a lot of room up here. Bill's signings yeah. are always a crowd scene, so let's have the students come up, yeah. uh, local officials. Please fill in back here. And, uh, and I understand I've got a special pen here. <laughs> Who wants to tell me about this special pen? It came from students in our center. Lots of room. Yep. Uh, room. In our woodworking shop. That is fabulous. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So here's one of here's one of the things that the come experts on, in photography on. tell me it looks better if everybody switches <laughs> around. Okay. Come on, yep. come on in, get in the picture, don't worry. And, and the photographers the photographers can tell us if anybody's being blocked. <laughs> This is what a bill looks like, right? It's in this red jacket, which indicates that it's a finalized piece of legislation that has made its way through the legislature, and it actually gets carried from the House, uh, in this case from the Senate, to the House, and back to the Senate, and then to the Secretary of State, and it goes to the Speaker of the House of Representatives and the Senate President, both of whom had to sign it before I can sign it, okay? So, here She's we go. the last right. blank. She's the last one. That's right. And Senate Bill 335 is a terrific law. Yeah. Now we'll sign House Bill 1350. Also, it's a good